Hi, I'm Bob Dodge with Artemis Gallery. I've been uh, dealing in ancient art for about 25 years, and over that time, I have collected some pieces that are just my favorites, and I'm going to show 10 of my favorite pieces. This beauty isn't one of them, although it's a fine piece. I'm talking about these 10 pieces. What we've got here are miniatures. And over the, gosh, 27 years that I've been collecting, one of the things that I most enjoy is finding a really wonderful miniature. So we have this fabulous bell crater uh, just came in, wonderful example. But here is a bell crater, same time period, same kind of workshop, southern Italy, Apulia. And here is a bell crater in miniature form. Very rare. Common, common-ish, very rare. I've seen two or three of these in my entire lifetime. So, bell crater form, lady of fashion, which we've talked about in previous uh, videos, but just a form you never see in miniature. So, uh, Greek Apulian bell crater. So, another of my favorite pieces. Uh, this is another piece that just came in. So here is a pouring vessel called a Procus, and look at the portrait on this. This is art at its highest level. So this is art that, in my humble opinion, and you know, we all have opinions, I think this art is far superior to the art in this bell crater. The artist that created this was a master. And one of the things that I look for in my miniatures, I want the degree of art to be as high as it is in the larger pieces. So another piece that is a favorite, if I don't drop and break that, um, this Roman oil lamp. So here is a miniature bronze oil lamp in a size I've never seen before. And when I had the opportunity to acquire this didn't have to think twice, just rare as can be, probably worked just fine. Not sure it was ever meant to be used, probably not, but a nice little bronze votive oil lamp from the Roman period, so about first century AD. Moving over into the New World, uh, the artists of the New World also created exquisite miniatures. So starting with the Chavin culture of northern Peru, so here is a stone cup of one of the underworld deities, maybe about an inch high. But again, the details and the skill and workmanship that went into creating this, every bit as high as the finest piece of Chavin art that you're going to find. So just a lovely piece. Um, also from the same region, uh, about a thousand years later, Moche, so a jaguar head made out of turquoise, native to that area, inset with gold eyes, but again, the details, the teeth, the, the forehead, the nostrils, uh, this was designed as a bead, but just wonderful art in miniature. Um, Southern Peru, a trophy head, Nazca. So we've all seen the bigger examples, you know, they get up to about a foot high, but here is a trophy head in miniature, nicely painted, absolutely authentic, Wonderful degree of workmanship, wonderful degree of paint. So just a really fine example. So moving a little bit further up, this is the only example I have ever seen of a Costa Rican avian axe god in miniature. So the beak drilled for suspension uh, in the traditional uh, silt form. And just just the cutest thing. It's just exquisite, made out of kind of a jade or jadeite stone, um, at least a thousand years old, as old as 1500 years old, from Costa Rica. And then possibly, well, two of my favorites, Kalima. Uh, a Kalima pottery mascot. Again, I've seen many of the larger forms, never seen one at this size. And then finally, moving across the border into North America. The only example of an Anasazi miniature that I've ever seen, decorated in a checkerboard fashion, which for some reason just really resonates with me. 
But again, somebody took the time and the skill to sit there and create each of these little checkerboards. So another thing I like about ancient art, I've got big pieces in my collection. I like interspersing these guys throughout because they just add a different element and a different story to the collection. These 10 take up the same footprint as one of these. So I probably have 50 or 60 miniatures in my collection and they're just interspersed amongst the bigger pieces and they just contribute so much. They fill in the voids, they tell a story, they represent just incredible levels of skill and artistic talent. And uh, quite frankly, when I'm collecting now, I'm more likely to look for a miniature than I am a full-size piece because it, it's easier to put about my collection. It's easier to buy more. They tend to be cheaper, although some of these examples get up relatively high in money. But there are so many reasons to throw some miniatures into your collection. If this resonates with you, give us a call. Bob Dodge, Artemis Gallery. Thanks.